if you can see my screen, please. Um, then an emoji and. Okay, that's good. That's great. Great. So, I'm gonna arise to start. Okay, um, um, good morning. Okay, it's about 8, 19 here in Nigeria. Um, okay, people, people, pardon me today. Um, like I said, I had a cold and I'm, I'm a whole lot better today. And I, I didn't want to give, come up with any excuses, you know, on why I would miss out because I've been looking forward to this opportunity. So I want to first of all thank Lux there for the opportunity to be able to give back to um, each and every one of us here. I could remember um, I've benefited from, um, that was the React training that was last year. I want to thank the organization and then um, every single one of us for the opportunity to give back. You know, giving back is not just um, um an opportunity to show yourself you know it, it, it brings back the memory that okay you were once somewhere and how you have grown to be where you are so today um, i'll be taking us on technical writing 101 the fundamentals of technical writing you want to be on want to understand the basics and then the systematic process of technical writing in in just late terms we just want to know what technical writing is all about you know it is easy you know everybody says start writing but there's a process there's a system to everything that we do even when we go we stand up in the morning there's something we do we either print so we move about to brushing our teeth you know eating dressing up getting ready for school and we don't just stand up and run to anywhere you're going to there's a process to get in there so simply and what we're going to be looking at today and i promise it's going to be fun it's going to be interesting and i would love it to be interactive because it is i would love it to be interactive you know keep your questions coming in the comment section like i really just said earlier and then let's maintain, let's maintain the column don't amuse yourself if you know that your uh, environment is noisy so keep this guy we move to the next slide Okay, um, so okay, we just want to look through, you know, there's a definition for technical writing. So we want to look at it and, you know, let's get familiar to what technical writing is all about. So, then, sorry, excuse me. Okay. Technical writing is simply um, referring to the process of conveying, you know, complex concepts and specialized information in a clear and concise manner so it's important okay somebody said they can't hear me well so uh, i'll try to you know be very much audible as loud as possible so that everybody can hear me well Okay, I said that technical writing is um, is is all it's a process of conveying. Um, I think the screen is off. Specialized, uh, sorry, complex um, information into into clear and uh, concise um, information. So in simple terms, um, for example, um, I'm, I, I built. You know, there's a there's a, I built a system, a, an engineering system, and then I have to make, um, I have to tell the public, the users, how to use the product. For example, we have our manuals at home for your TVs, um, for your um, earbuds, for your blenders, for every, almost virtually every single thing that we use today, we actually bought um, 
from the market of memory where they actually they actually guys and um, placed into them why so it could guide us it could help us to understand the use so we could maximize the product i could remember when i bought my um, my airports uh, it's an arrival airports i didn't know how to use it but once i opened the packet i got out the, um, the user guide manual and I began to read and understand, okay, I have to hold on to this place for two seconds to be able to listen to music. I have to hold on to this place to pick calls for the ANC future and a whole lot of things. So technical writing is just a form of professional writing that focuses on providing instructions, explanations, and documentations related to a technical or scientific subject. So what is the primary goal of technical writing? Technical writing, the primary goal of technical writing is to facilitate effective communication between the experts, non-experts, by presenting the information in a way that is easily understandable and usable. Like I said, when I was defining the technical writing, what technical writing is all about. I said it's important that you're actually conveying your message. Most of the things that we use daily at in our homes, whether our systems, our machines, whatever we use, if you actually go back and see the complex process involved in production, we will get confused. But with the user guide manual or the report or whatever the memos, placed in those gadgets we could we could we could easily use them and we are and we actually have the mind we actually have the mind of the person who produced it because what is the use of a device what is the use of a product when the people you build the product for cannot use it <clears throat> so it, it often tr involves translating technical concepts and terminology into language that can be comprehended by your target audience, which may include your users, your customers, your colleagues, or your stakeholders. So you're actually meeting them at their own level. They're actually communicating. For example, you want to, for example, people that prepare whether fufu, semo, I produce a, a, a floor, a, whether a type of um, floor, whatever, and I don't tell people how to use it, whether they have to make a paste first before adding it to boiling water. The person may be trying to do it and fills the first time, he tries the second time, fills it, and dumps your product. The person will not like to get back to your product because the person is like, ah, I don't know how to use it. I know most of us have been in cases where we got a product because of we did not see a guide on how to use that product and how well to use it. We actually dumped it. Here may be a friend, colleague, or somebody very dear to us came and told us, why, why, you, why did you pack this? And the person was able to explain, say, oh, that's how it works. So assuming there was a very proper documentation on the usage of that product, we'll find out that we'll be able to maximize the use of that product because we were not there when they were produced. We don't know what was in the mind of the person who produced it, but with the guide, with the technical paper, we can actually maximize and know the mind of the producer. So, okay, somebody is saying, is it me or is it breaking? Okay, okay. My network is very stable here. I don't know why that is happening. Okay, but let's move ahead. I'll try. Okay, somebody said it's not breaking. Maybe it's from your network. Okay, I'll try to be as audible as I can, but it's, it's I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best. Okay, so looking, of, looking at um, the types of documents involved in technical writing, we have, I was, I've been very particular about user guide manuals, um, that has to do with instructions on how to operate, assemble, or troubleshoot a product or system. Then procedures and policies, the step-by-step -step guidelines to, for performing tasks or adhering to organizational policies. For example, you get into an organization and you have, it is a policy. You should be at work at 8 a.m. and then leave by 4 p.m. So it's all varied how to act your dress code all these things have to do with documentation and then we have technical reports um we already we are i think we already must have already been very familiar with this it has to do with detailed reports that present things analysis or research in a structured manner okay 
I, I can't see the screen again. So, um, for example, in your school, you must have had an opportunity to present one or, the, one or two things, like for your project, your IT, you came back, you have to actually document. So, you can see that technical writing is not limited to just technical reports. We have seen so far that we have um, user guide manuals, we have um, policies, and we have yeah, technical reports, we have memos, even a um, way to structure your email address, addresses in the office, how to write formal letters. All these things have to do with technical writing. Okay, I can't see the screen anymore. I don't know why. I don't know why that's happening. Okay, so all this is have to do with technical writing, you know, documentation and um, making it concise. Like I said, I'm very clear, simple. It is clear, it's clear. You know, when, for example, for user guide manual, they'll tell you, press the button on the right end of the product. When the green light comes on, do this. You see how very clear it is, no ambiguity. So that's the aim of technical writing. So we see proposals, white papers, which has to do with in-depth documentation that explain, that explore specific technologies, products or industry issues. We have data sheets that have to do with data sheets that have to do with information that provide um, specific specifications and technical details about a product or service. You know, like I was explaining. And then moving over to the training materials, what we use to educate users or employees for specific skills or topics. So, okay, we're moving over to, okay, okay, we'll just round up um, what technical writing. So to achieve uh, technical writing, like I said, concise, clear, and simple. So, okay, what are we going to cover here? We're going to be looking at the fundamentals of technical writing. We're going to be looking at the importance of technical writing. We're going to be looking at the five systematic steps in technical writing. We're going to be understanding what our target and purpose of writing. We're going to be developing uh, appropriate, we're going to be learning about the appropriate writing style. We are going to be also learning about the structure. We're going to be learning about the structure of a standard technical paper and then the grammar and proofreading skill tools, skills and tools technical writing tools and applications and then the applications of technical writing so next slide please we are going to be looking at the fundamentals of technical writing so when we talk about the fundamentals of technical writing next slide please okay when we talk about the fundamentals of technical writing successful writing on the job is not a product of inspiration nor is it um merely the spoken word converted to print is the result of knowing how to structure information using both text and design. So, so fundamental things we're going to be looking at about technical writing is the purpose and the audience. Clearly defining the purpose of the document or communication. You're clear, you have to be clear. For example, I'm writing a documentation on what causes, um, why do uh, people above maybe 50, their legs have to do with their legs that having arthritis. It is clear that the purpose is to find out the reason why people above 50 have arthritis. It's very specific. It's clear, it's defined. The purpose of the document or communication is very clear. And then I have, I have as you can see that I've really identified my target audience and I've also understood their knowledge, their background, and the needs. My target audience are majorly people above 50, and then people also who will try to avoid those eat things I would I would come up with. And then I've seen the need. Of, of people, you know, avoiding stroke and all those things that happen to people. And then I will now say low the content, my tone, a level of detail to meet the audience requirement. Because I'm writing to people above 50. I'm not writing to, so, so to say, very young people. So everything has to be channeled and toned to meet the audience requirement. So please, the next slide. Okay, the next slide, please. 
okay i'm um, sorry you missed okay yeah we're going to be looking at um clarity and simplicity using plain language and avoiding unnecessary jargon or technical terms breaking down complex ideas into understandable chunks we have to also structure our paragraphs and sentences logically for easy comprehension then we have to when we talk about organization and structure we have also plan we have to also plan the document structure before writing including headings and subheadings these are the fundamental things you look when you talk about technical writing this is the next slide okay we have to talk about also visual communication we have to utilize visual aids for example diagrams charts tables illustrations to enhance understanding for example i'm talking about the human heart i cannot just write a paper without displaying the picture of the human heart pointing out the parts of you know that has to do with what i want to achieve so you can see that people are actually drawn to visual you know visual document visual things and they don't actually forget things so it's actually important for example people you're talking about you're analyzing data they must be charts they must be pie charts depending on what histograms whatever you want to do so is it actually important to put to include for example technical when you talk about uh maybe writing a coding whatever you have to give an example of what you're doing maybe in a visual concept so I've used a lot of examples, I've used a lot of analogies. So you have to incorporate relevant examples, case studies, or real world scenarios to illustrate your concepts. For example, like I, I, I'll bring up the e example I, was, I used initially that had to do with um, why people have arthritis and pain in their legs when they are about 50 years old. I'll actually bring up case studies, uh, maybe uh, a questionnaire released, you know things to show that okay this thing is real what's my proof that people are that people are both 50 actually begin to have pains in their legs there should be um, a case study there should be real world scenarios you don't just run with um, your head knowledge you should it has a lot of things to do with research so by the time we look at um the five successful steps in technical writing everything will become clearer and then looking at consistency and accuracy you have to maintain consistency in terminology, your abbreviations, and the formats throughout the content. So you have to also, you have to maintain however you started your terminology. You don't have to make it um, look too ambiguous. You also, if you have to use abbreviations, you have to use keywords, which you actually explain later at the end of the document. So next slide, please. Okay, we, uh, we're moving over to revision and proofreading. We have to review the um, documents for clarity and coherence, and then the logical flow. Make sure that your document flows. Okay, for example, I said I want to I want to talk about technical writing. When I define technical writing, I move on to um, talk about um, the importance. I move on. It should, should be systematic. Should be coherent. I shouldn't carry what should be at the top to the bottom. And then I shouldn't carry what should be at the uh, mid to bottom and scrap and make everything look uh, really you know, not good at all. So uh, we have we're also looking at documentation and formatting. We have to follow appropriate documentation standards such as APA or MLA if required. And APA 6, I think, uh, for projects, uh, APA 6 is like the recommended. You have to use our consistent format, format for headings font, spaces, and margins. You will not use header one first. Okay, you will not use header two first, and then after header two, I'll be seeing header one in your paper. It doesn't work that way. If you choose to start with header one, it's going to go hierarchical from H to H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6. Um, it's a bit of jargon because it has to do with markdown. So it should be it should be systematic. It should follow a process. And then we have to also include our necessary elements like the title of our page, our table of content, and then the references. Please, can we move to the next slide? Please. And then, okay, we're looking at the user-centric approach. 
you have to anticipate and address potential questions or concerns of the end users. You have to also focus on user experience and provide clear instructions and guidance. I've been saying it clear, concise, clear, concise. And then you have to incorporate, you have to incorporate um, user feedback to improve the usability and the effectiveness of the document. So you have to incorporate feedback, a process where people can actually give feedback and then so you could improve uh, the usability and effectiveness of your document. Documents are not written uh, as, a, as, as an ended as an ended itself. You write it to get better, you receive feedback, maybe you could come in comments, you know, you could come in replies, you could come in people filling forms and all that, depending on the approach you choose. Then you have to review, revision and control and versioning. You have to maintain a system for tracking your versions and uh, the revisions and versions of the document. You have to clearly indicate the document date, version, and authorship, and then keep record of changes made to ensure accuracy and traceability. So it's important that you actually keep record of your changes. For example, I'm doing a research and everything keeps going on and on. I need to keep, I need to ensure that I keep record of the changes that are happening there so that whenever I come back to make a reference or to see how I got somewhere, there is a track record. There is track, there's track record. There's something we call an um, software developers and um, software development. We have already some tools like Git we could use to track your changes. So, so it applies the same way to in technical writing. There must be a means to track your changes. So next slide, please. Okay, now we're moving over to the next thing that we're going to be touching is um, the five successful and systematic steps in technical writing. Very important. Very, very important. I'll just advise everybody to just pay attention. If you're jotting down beautiful, the slides will be available later. And then I'll also be dropping some resources later, books and, and recommended um, papers to read. Um, when we talk about, like I said, technical writing, I think somebody messaged me, um, I think two days ago, I, I actually saw the message today, because I didn't get, I didn't see the notification on time. They said, oh, I, I want to get started in technical writing. I think this is my first time, I've not done it before, but I don't know how to start. Now, this is for you. By the time we are done with these five things, you will be ready to start, and you will know how to start, and, and starting where, which is very important. So uh, successful writing on the job is not a product of inspiration, nor is it merely the spoken word converted to print, that is like printed documents, rather it's the result of knowing how to structure information using your text and design to achieve an intended purpose for a clearly divided audience. I'll read the name. Successful writing on the job is not a product of inspiration, nor is it merely the spoken word converted to print. Rather, it's the result of knowing how to structure information using my test and design to achieve an intended purpose for a clearly defined audience. So from what I just read now, for us to be successful writers, it's not a product of inspiration. Some people say, ah, so that I don't have the inspiration to write, no. For this writing, it's not a product of inspiration. It's not a product of just merely speaking and then converting it to print. It's a result of knowing how to structure information and then using your text and your layout to achieve the intended purpose for a target, for a clearly defined audience, like a target audience. It's important, this is actually something that has to be digested. So take your time, and the later you read it to know. So we're looking at the five steps for successful technical paper. Number one is preparation. Number two, research. Three, organization. For writing, and then finally, revision. Preparation, research, organization, writing, and revision. So can we please go to the next slide? <clears throat> yeah. 
So when we talk about preparation, okay, let me just give a little talk before that. We actually need to follow, likely need to follow steps consciously, even self-consciously. These steps you have to follow them consciously, like very consciously, self-consciously at first. Um, it's almost similar to getting to use a software. Technical writing is almost similar to getting you getting to use a software for the first time. For example, when you started out in learning, maybe for example, a programming language or a software, any software, whatever well, Microsoft, whatever it is, application software, or software, whatever it is, you actually self, you are consciously getting to know what each thing was doing and how everything worked. You, it now becomes like you now develop a muscle memory for it. So you have to systematically write out these steps when you're starting out and follow them graciously. And you use the time you get used to it to get better with time. So with practice, the steps become nearly automatic. And this is not to suggest that writing becomes easy. You know, some people say writing becomes easy. No, it doesn't get easy. No. However, the easiest and most efficient way to write effectively is to do it systematically. Writing is not easy. Rather, when we do it constantly and often, we actually get more effective in it. So it matters that we look at these five steps to keep in mind the water that they are interrelated, interrelated, and then they often overlap. For example, I'm going to be looking at um, for example, okay, just roughly going through some of them. When we talk about preparation, we talk about uh, writing. Okay, writing like most particular tasks requires solid preparation. In fact, you have to adequately prepare yourself because writing a adequate preparation is equivalent to writing a draft. Draft is like your rough step of whatever you're doing. So it's important that you prepare before you write. Okay, let me use an analogy. For example, I want to cook fried rice. I don't want to say, oh, I know I, I like to eat rice. I get rice. I just put it on fire. And so I will first think, what are the things I need to for my fried rice? I need to get my carrot. I need to get my cucumber. No, 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 not cucumber. I need to get my green peppers, my bell peppers, whatever you use, your green peas, your sweet corn, whatever you use, you know, your peas, whatever, however you love it. Your sausage chicken. And then you say, okay, I need to go to the market and get there. You get there. When you get them, you cut it, you wash it first, you chop, cut them, keep them aside, you get your seasoning, you wash your rice, now you begin to boil your rice, you add your curry, whatever you do, you now begin to see there's a process to it. I cannot just rush and say, oh, rice, put rice on fire, put it. You will not have the best of fried rice, no. Or I want to cook fried rice, I use general fried shrimp and um, recipe. It will work. It's the same thing, technical writing. There is a process to it. There's a, there's a preparation to it. You have to actually prepare ahead of this. So we're looking at um not to waste our time. We're looking at um preparation and preparation for writing. What the goal is because, for example, we're cooking fried rice. The goal of, of cooking fried rice is to eat fried rice. So, for example, if you're right, you have to look at the goal because the goal of your writing is what is going to actually aid you in your preparation. Get that the goal of what you're writing. Your, uh, your your audience is going to what's going to help you in your preparation. For example, uh, like I said, you're cooking rice, fried rice. And after getting um paper and uh, paper mix and red tomatoes, you know you're confused. You don't know what you're doing. So the goal, the end result, eh, the process is as important as the end result. Get that, get that. The process is as important as the end result. So and things we look at the third major tax, you have to establish your primary purpose. And when I say when you have to establish your primary purpose, you have to ask yourself, what do you want your readers to know? What do you want them to believe? And what or what do you want them to be able to do after they have finished reading what you have written? I'll take it again. What do you want your readers to know? What do you want them to believe? And then what do you want them to be able to do after they have finished reading what you have written? Just in the, in the process, just take it. I'm happy that we're recording it later. You can go and go through it. So you have to be precise. You have to know, you have to hit the, is it the nail on the head? You don't have to, you don't have to know what you, you're, you're passing across to your uh, readers. It's just like I tell, okay, I'll just come to my friends and say, oh, I'm cooking fried rice. 
And then the next minute, they, I bring out um, a red color rice. And they're like, oh, you said you're cooking fried rice. You can see that my readers, they didn't achieve, they didn't get what you know I was actually saying. So it's important for us to note all these things out and work with it. You have to um, okay, like I was just for example, a topic, um, let's say possibly food. Uh, for example, I'm talking about foods that cause diabetes, and um, is a general topic. Foods that cause diabetes. No, but imagine if I'm looking at a topic like the effect of sugar. I'm actually precise. I'm talking about I'm com I'm comparing rice plantain and yam and then i want to check what is the sugar content the effect on the diabetic patient eating it is really any good for them so you have to be precise in whatever you're doing so as to hit you know what you're doing so you have to assess your primary purpose assessing sorry yes assessing your primary purpose which has to do with um your audience and your content context context you need to be direct by acting who are your readers you need to see or use the document your readers need sorry your readers need in relation to your subject what do your readers already know these are some questions you should ask when you're talking about assessing your audience this i i think that was i missed something so supposed to be assessing your audience and your context so you should ask for your readers what do you already know um, your readers, your readers needs in relation to your subject, and then should you define some basic terminology? Are you communicating? Very important. For example, if you're writing a document that could be for international readers, are you dealing with issues that are relating to in go? Are you dealing with issues inherent in global communication? Your context. When you're talking about context, you're talking about. Um, is your context, you know, when you talk about context, you say it is simply the environment. Like I said, it's supposed to be accessing your um uh, your audience and context. So it was a mistake for me. So when you talk about context, it's actually simply the environment or circumstance in which your writers produce documents and within which readers interpret their meanings. For example, you can say something, somebody takes it out of context. You'll be like, no, 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 I didn't, I didn't mean that. I mean this. This is what I meant. So that's what context is. The environment, like it's like a boundary. The boundary of what your document is about. So you have to, we're going to move over to the next step. The next step, you have to determine the scope. Determine your purpose and assessing your readers. And then the context will help you decide what to include and what not to include in your writing. They define your scope of your writing purpose. So if you do not determine your scope, it will cost you your time and then needless information. Sometimes you may be writing about um, something, maybe a topic on, maybe say, uh, for example, the heart, the uses of the heart. You see, you have to know the scope of what you're writing on. It's because there's a lot of information about the heart, like millions and millions, like, could be billions of information about the heart. But it's just, you know, you should know your scope. Where, where, where your preparation, you should know your scope, where you're not crossing. You, because it will just make you have so much if you use less information in your article with it, not which will leave your readers more confused. So, okay, having to write that, can we move over to the next slide? Okay. Okay. Okay, sorry, selecting the appropriate medium. Okay, let me just run through it. Selecting the appropriate medium, you have to se se um, select which medium we will use to pass your information um, for communicating with your message. Uh, professionals on job facing a wide range of options. You could use emails, fax, voice mail, reports, um, video conferencing, audio. We have YouTube uh, places you use to select excuse me, your medium of communication. But the most important consideration is selecting the appropriate medium and the audience and then the purpose of the communication. Okay, audience. For example, I want to first communicate to villagers, people in the interior of the town. I cannot start posting on YouTube because I know that majority of them don't know what YouTube is. I will look for radios. I will look for town criers. I will, I will meet them at their need. For example, during the COVID-19 pandemic, 
how do you think people in the village got they, they, how do you think they got to know about it it was either through radios or through maybe friends and family calling them so you have to actually know your audience what determines your selection of your medium is um, the audience and the purpose of communication so okay let's move to the next slide please okay we are going to be looking at the second step in successful writing research the only way to be sure that you can write about a complex subject is to thoroughly and extensively understand it and we cannot understand it without uh, um, conducting adequate research whether you're conducting an extensive investigation for a major proposal or through interviews could be library interns, the internet search and carefully not take it so you cannot understand the concept a complex concept without you, you cannot uh, write first you can't even you can't even write about it you, when you don't even understand it you yourself you have to first understand it and then how do you get to understand it by researching you research there are a lot of libraries you know documents things all around the world that you could actually use to get more information excuse me <clears throat> okay so we're looking at the methods of researching we have definitively maybe two methods of research which are the primary and the secondary and then we just look at them before moving on we have the primary research which refers to gathering raw data compiled maybe from interviews direct observations surveys experiments questionnaires audio and video um recordings and uh, these are the primary one. Primary is the primary research. That's what primary research. You're the one getting the information. You're not getting it from any source. You're getting the information directly. That's why it's called primary. You could go and ask people in a group of plain plays. For example, you want to know why students fail. You have to go and meet the students. You, you go and meet the students directly to know why they fail. And then we're looking at the secondary research. It's simply gathering information that has already been analyzed, assessed, evaluated, compiled, or otherwise organized into accessible terms. So you're not really um, processing anything. So the area of, you know, so for example, you see people, they write, and then they reference, because there are, are people that have really done it before then. So it could include the books, articles, um, reports, web documents, uh, um email discussions and procures so it, it, it involves a lot it involves a lot and so you could see the pros and the cons of uh, this primary and secondary primary sometimes it could be time consuming it could be um it could be um exposed costly very very much costly because you need you're doing it a from scratch so Accessing information is not going to be really easy. And then the beautiful thing about it is it's fact hand, you're sure what you're using. There's a lot. And then some of the pros of our secondary research is that it doesn't cost a lot of time. Um, it's not costly because it's already somebody has already worked on something similar. Um, but the cause is that it's not first hand and uh, the information may not be totally correct. So these are some of the things you look out for uh, when you're picking your type of the method of research so we can look at some of the sources of information we know the knowledge that our own knowledge and that of our colleagues the knowledge of people outside our workspace our internet sources library sources printed and electronic sources in the workspace so workplace so there are a lot of sources of information you know yeah there, there are some banks so yeah, i think abroad on my head that um, I was in Ireland, somebody told me who was schooling there that there's a resource bank. I was like, wow. And then they pay people to come and do, do research with those resources. And I was like, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. So, okay, let's, let's have him treated um, research. We have looked at preparation and we have looked at research. Now we know what to the third step organization. What is organization? So, without organization, the preparation the, pre the preparatory steps the uh, information we gathered in our uh, research will be so incoherent so i read that so we have to organize information effectively we need to actually determine the best way to structure our ideas and um, we need to be looking at the method of development 
um, an appropriate method of those development is the writer's tool for keeping the information under control and various means of following the, read, the writer's presentation. Let me read that again. The method of development when it comes to organization is the writer's tool for keeping information under control and the reader's means of following the writer's presentation. So if I let um organization is very important. When you have prepared, okay, for example, I'll use the fragrance analogy. When you're um frying your rice, you don't add oil, you you don't fry, you don't fry your veggies before you're cooking your rice. Maybe you fry your veggies and then you know, I don't know why people have the service of people fry that. But you even if you have to add the rice, you have to still avoid it first. But there's a there's a there's a you have to organize things. You have to organize after preparing yourself, cutting everything, getting written together, and then your research. You know the process you're going to think. Then you have to actually follow the proper organization process. So, for example, depending on your um, depending on your context. For example, I'm writing a user guide now. The method of development will be is, is called the sequential method of development. That means you're saying the sequential means one, two. Do you do one first before two, two before three, three before four. So it's sequential. If you miss one and go to two, you would you can't you can't move to three, you can't move to four. So it actually is a um, sequential method of development. And then when you're uh, for example, a history organization, you're writing about um, history, you know, things that have to do with history. The method of development is chronological method of development, you know, because it dates back to this, it dates back to the AD, you know, all those stuff, BC, before Christ, and all that. So can we move to the next? <clears throat> okay. Okay. Uh, yes, after talking, you have to, you have prepared yourself, after you have done your research, you've uh, you've um, organized yourself now you have to outline so you're not breaking the large or complex subjects into manageable parts so you um it involves you have to emphasize the key point by placing them in positions of greater importance for example i'm talking about the heart I'll, talk, I'll, say, I'll tell you where the heart is where the heart is located and uh, how the heart you know is the shape and all those information well, the next thing is introduction, how the heart works. I'm giving us the brief uh, me, uh, meaning of the heart and all that. Introduction. Then we we'll look at um, you know the process of the heart pumping blood. So everything has to follow an outline. So so that when the reader is it's it's it, it, it sequential. It's moving you know sequentially from the first down to the last. So a well-developed outline ensures that your document is complete and logically organized. So when you structure your thinking at an early, early stage, it actually helps you to, you know, for a very good in documentation. So after this, we consider our layout and our design, you know, the elements, the uh, our layout designs. Okay. Okay, let me read it from here. Okay. By structuring your thinking at an early stage, a well-developed outline ensures that your document will be complete and logically organized. After this, you will start considering the layout and design elements appropriate for the readers. readers. So you now begin, you know, sorry, you now begin to think about the layout, whether it's the A4 layouts, how you want the layout to be the design, and all that, all that, the headings, which of the headings will you be starting with? Like I was talking about H1, you know, some of those things have to do with markdown. Uh, oh, yes, it has some of the way I talk about H1, H2, it's a markdown. But at the same time, if you're using MS Word to write, you have to know which heading you're starting with, the font, you know, the font size of your first heading. You will not use the same, you will not use a bigger font size. And later, later on in the, the, the body of your paper, it looks, it looks, it's all professional. So if you start with font 13 as the title of your document, as you go on, you could choose to lower it to 12, and then it keeps going down to you conclude your document. So, okay, please, can we move over to the last step? 
Writing, writing, that's where complete everything. We have talked about, we've talked about preparation, we have talked about research, we have talked about outlining. I think we've talked about how to make something organization before outlining, and then the writing, which is the main thing. So when you're uh, when you establish your purpose, your readers' needs, your scope, your target audience, and you have completed your research, your outlining, you will not be well prepared to write your first drafts. So now you want to expand your outline into paragraphs. You use your proper punctuations, usage, abbreviations, your keyword, and then you now write your first draft without concentrating. Your, you have to not to concentrate your uh, in your paragraphing and all of that. So you have to now write your first draft. You're ready. When you have gone through from step one to step four, you're ready for your first draft. So you cannot put this like a rough, you do like a rough sketch. So when you're done writing your rough sketch, you now go ahead now to now package each and every one of them from your introduction to the body, however you want your body. However, how many paragraphs you are looking at in your, your, your paper, the main paragraphs, others should just be following sentences, your headings, your conclusion, and all that. So these are the things you look at when we talk about your writing. So you should not really worry about a good opening when you're writing your first draft. Just start. Because some of us will be like, oh, I don't know how to start. Just start writing. How you have prepared yourself. Start put your first draft here. Yeah, just write it. Write about the heart. Write everything you have put down. Uh, you know, preparation, all those notes, those notes you have taken down, you have noted, take everything down, write it down. So um, and then just start. Yeah, the most effective um, way of writing your draft is following your outline. Like I said, right? I, when I say write, I don't mean you just write yagali. No. You follow your outline. You follow your outline. You follow your outline. How your outline is your introduction, your types, your importance, the body, your how your diagrams, um, numbering your diagrams. If your if the standards allow you to number the diagrams, um, but depending on what you're writing, then your conclusion. So you have to also be very very careful, following ensuring that you follow your outline. And then I quoted, um, you don't need inspiration when to write. Inspiration must meet you, must find you writing. Simple. You don't need any inspiration to write. Inspiration must find you writing. So, okay. I think we should move, move over to the next slide. So your revision, which is final, is final link. Because you went after writing your own draft, following your half line, you have to review. You have to review. At this stage, you bring in all your content for review while dotting your eyes, crossing your teeth. You have to look out for uh, grammatical errors. You have to look out for punctuations. You have to look out for abbreviations that you used. Make sure that they are already explained. You have to look out for mistakes. You could even introduce the third eye to help you look at what you have done. So that you know, sometimes we could get overwhelmed and then too used to our ourselves and what we're doing. You could just ask somebody also into what you're doing to say, Oh, look at this document. The information there, did I achieve what I did? Did I achieve? Did I achieve that? So this is the vision. <clears throat> so just to run through, remember that your um, document, your opening must announce the subject and give readers essential basic information. You must you actually open you should announce the subject and you must give them the basic information they are looking for. So because this is the primary purpose. And um, for longer um, documents, an intro should serve as a frame into which we just can fit the detailed information that follows. So it should be like a frame, like okay, this is what it, this is what it's about, and then they should follow it. Finally, okay, you also need a conclusion that has um that actually carries the main ideas together emphatically makes a final significant point For example i finished my research on the, the effect of rice um sugar um, rice planting on the on diabetic patients why do you have diabetic anything on this make sure that then my conclusion it must come to a point that okay it is better to eat rice 
Oh yeah, I'm a plantain. And then my final point should also be a recommended course of action. It could be a course of action of telling people maybe to exercise more, so as to burn more sugar, or make a prediction or judgment, or it could be a summary. The way you conclude depends on the purpose of your writing and your readers, your readers need. So you also have to look at all these things. You have to look at all these things, the purpose of your writing and then your readers need. You have to look at all these things to ensure that you, your writing is successful. So, okay. Be going over to the next slide, please. Okay. Um, Looking at, we're looking at the next um, subtopic, which has to do with developing an appropriate writing style in technical writing. So when we talk about the appropriate writing style in technical writing, it's very crucial, like I said, when I'm talking about the fundamentals, um, you have to write effectively to convey your complex information while maintaining clarity and professionalism. There are some key considerations for developing an appropriate writing style in technical writing. Number one, your clarity and simplicity. People should get the point and are very simple. Two, your tone and your voice. Your tone and your voice. I actually explained everything out, but because of uh, you know my slides getting extremely large and much hard to you know cut it out so your clarity and simplicity has to do with using your clear and straightforward language to ensure that your writing is easily understood by a target audience acronyms acronyms acronyms, acronyms sorry acronyms and technical terms that might be unfamiliar to readers unless necessary make sure you avoid a lot of jargon and then when using technical terms, provide clear definition or explanation. Don't come and talk about um, uh, maybe one um, osmosis, the osmosis that occurs. People are like, oh, what's osmosis? You talk about, tell us what osmosis is first. The tone and your voice, adopt a tone that is objective, concise, and professional. Maintain a neutral and informative voice, avoiding personal opinions or bias. You don't just come and put in your bias into technical writing. No, it should be neutral and informative. The focus should be on presenting factual information rather than expressing personal preferences or emotions. I will not say, oh, when I'm writing about rice, maybe about um, the effect of um, rice, plantain, and yam yeah, on diabetic patients. Because I like maybe plantain, I will not say, oh, right, which plantain? I like it. No, you don't do that. You objective, you objective about it. Then you have to be consistent. You have to maintain consistency in your writing style. Try terminology, you have revisions and planization as follow the content easily and enhances readability. Active voice, active voice. I clearly explained it. Prefer the active voice over the active or Active voice over passive voice whenever possible. The active voice is more direct and concise, making it read readers, making it easier for the readers to understand and then who is performing the action and improving the overall quality of the document. So you have to be in active voice because it actually addresses the person you're, you wrote it for. So your sentence structure is clear and concise, avoid complexities visual formatting i said utilize your headings subheadings bullet points and numbered list to organize information for clear readability for example i said for your headings then you have subheadings make sure that they are properly arranged number your bullets you need to use bullets you know what bullets are some could be um, dots small small dots could be in dashes could be in numbers to do it that way avoid redundancy because size and avoid necessary unnecessary repetition, repetition, sorry, grammar and mechanics. Ensure your writing adheres to proper grammar, punctuation, and the spelling rules. Proofread your work carefully to identify and correct any errors. Because state and accurate use of grammar and mechanics is enhances the professionalism of your writing. I this is the 101 of technical writing. I didn't go into anything complex because these are the basic. If your foundation is very cemented, 
by the time you're building on it, you'll be so good. You'll be so good. You will be so good. You can take into everything I've told you today and put them into practice. Adapt to the audience. Consider the background, the knowledge level, and the expectation of your audience. Adapt your writing style to match their needs and preferences. For instance, writing for a technical audience might allow for more specialized terminology. While writing for a general audience may require simpler language. For example, if I'm writing for software developer, I could use some terminology, some technical terminology that I expect you to already know. But if I'm writing for the general public, I'm writing a COVID-19, um, you know, how to avoid a user manual, how to prevent, avoid COVID-19 by being hygienic. I want to be using knowledge. I would, I would try to make it so simple. Even if a layman that who doesn't understand will pick the document and understand. I know that touching um public places could put him at tricks. Although it's just an example, I don't know. You have to make it so easy. For example, you're writing the recipe for rice, how to cook rice. Make sure it's so simple. Maybe if you're writing for chefs, you write it. To, because they are more technical than maybe the somebody that doesn't want to try something out. So it's very important. Because it's very, very important. So your revision and editing, you know, you have to use objective review your writing objectively, 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 and then it critically. You must edit your work to improve clarity, coherence, and organization. Consider seeking feedback, like I said initially, from your peers or subject matter experts. To ensure you your writing style effectively, effectively communicates the intended message. All right. So remember that you're developing an appropriate writing. Remember, developing an appropriate writing style in technical writing is a continuous process that evolves based on the audience context. Remember, I said context is like the boundary, the background, the environment, what you're talking about. And the purpose of the document by consistently practicing and refining your writing style, you can create technical documents that are informative, accessible, and professionally written. For example, I'm talking about the use of sugar, the effect of sugar in a diabetic person. There's a context of sugar when you talk about sugar in a diabetic person, it's different when I'm talking about the same sugar for athletes. The use of sugar, effect of sugar in athletes. So you can see that in diabetes, it may be that it you know, spikes up their blood sugar. And then for athletes, it could be that it gives them energy. I'm not, this is not um, like, I'm not a medical expert. So I'm just giving an example, please. Just for an example, so just for example purposes. So you can see that there are actually two different contexts. If I should carry the context of the person, or the diabetics example, into uh, the athlete or the athlete with diabetes, the 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 aim is real. So let's let's leave it professional and let's always follow follow context. Please, okay. Can we move over to the next slide? Okay. Um, you have to zoom in a bit to look. Okay. There's a standard of um, a structure, just a structure of a technical standard technical paper. You know, based on the document, you know, initially we looked at some types of technical from technical papers, user guide manuals, and all that. But I took, I picked up, um, you know, the standard um, structure of a technical paper. What it looks like. So the structure of a standard technic technical paper typically follows a format. To ensure clarity, organization, and effective communication of research findings or technical information. Listen carefully. While there are many, there may be variations depending on the specific field of publication guidelines. Remember that there are specific fields. When I'm writing a report, there are standards. When I'm writing a user guide manual, standard. I'm writing an email, standard. Policy, standard. Why all of them may vary due to the specific field? Uh, publication guideline. The following structure provides a general framework. So just take this as a general framework. General framework for every paper. The first thing when you open when you're taking it, this is something that looks like how the outlines. This is just like the outline. Right, you see your title and then your author information. The title is concise. Um, concise and informative title that reflects the content of the paper. 
for example, I'm writing about something that has to do with um, let's say fried rice. My title must reflect fried rice, and then whatever the aim of the fried rice that I'm going to write about. Then the author, the name of the author, and the affiliations. This could be institutional, organization, or company. Remember that I said it varies. It could vary, but this is just the general framework. Then we have the abstract. Abstract is simply the summary of the paper's objective, methodology, key findings, and implications. It's usually limited to 150 to 250 words. Provides a concise overview to help you guys understand the paper's relevance and determine whether they want to read for it. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. So you could see now that um, with this, if you don't have a proper abstract, your abstract doesn't have the, it doesn't meet the objective. People will actually leave your paper. People may have what they are looking for, but if your abstract is not telling their story, what they want to know, they leave it for you. So moving over to your introduction, it provides the background information, context, and the rationale for the research or topic. And then it clearly states the objective of your, your research questions. It reviews your relevant literature or previous work to highlight the research gap. And then the four, we have the methodology, methodology slash the experimental setup. It then describes the research design methodology or experimental setup used. You include your details on data collection to the equipment or procedures employed. You enables reproducibility and allows other researchers to understand and replicate the study. You, look, this is very important. Make sure that whenever you're writing your methodology, people are able to reproduce and you know move further on your research. You don't write, you don't, you don't, you don't write technical papers for it to end there. No, you have to write so that when someone comes, there's a modification, they'll be able to modify. Then your results, you have to present your findings or outcomes of the research or analysis. You could, you could use tables, that is the visual representation, tables, graphs, charts, or figures to illustrate your data or trends. You have to also provide, your results also provide objective analysis and interpretation of the results. Then we look at the discussion, analysis and interpretation the results to the context, to the context, the environment of the research objective, relates the findings to existing literature or theories, you address your limitations, challenges, or alternative explanations. Yeah. That's when you come in with what your own deduction from whatever you did. Then your conclusion, you have to summarize your key findings and the implications. Restate the research objective and I like the significance of the result. And then you may suggest your future research directions and applications. Then look at the reference. You have to list, like I said, when you're using say when you're using the secondary, which most times happens, which secondary research method, somebody has already done something. You remember, you have to list the sources cited within the paper using uh, standardized citations that we have the upper six or MLA. You have to look at um you have to look at that. You have to look at some of those standards, maybe your own free time <clears throat> to know what it is and how to write it proper. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. So um APA is the standard of documentation of sources used by the American Psychological Association. Do what APA means. Okay, the reference is time. Yeah. So it's something that you look on by yourself. So excuse me, let me take water. Okay, so when we talk about the MLA, it means the Modern Language Association. So this group sets formatting guidelines. For example, this is majorly for academic writing in humanities. So you go look, you could on your free time, look at that. 
So um append is append is if applicable, it could if it's applicable, yeah. Um include supplementary information, data calculations, or any additional whatever that you need to add. Then you acknowledge your individuals, organizations, or funding sources that contributed to the research. And then you recognize any assistance or support received in the project. It is essential to consult specific, sorry, specific publication guidelines or target journal requirements for an additional section for additional additional sections, such as a conflict of interest statement or auto contribution. Adhering to the structure and formatting guidelines, ensure that your technical paper is well organized, coherent, and easily accessible to the intended audience. So you can see it's very important. You have to reach out to some. So you have to reach out to your journal, your the journal, I'm sorry, publication guidelines, future for publication guidelines. So you know the general requirements, what you're writing. So most of this is actually apply, you know, academic writing, you know, and um, it's very, very important. You know, I could have just um, jumped into writing a, a paper or in uh, whatever, uh, <clears throat> Software development, but no, this is this is the standard for technical writing because technical writing is beyond um, just writing papers. Technical concept for software development. We are using guide miners. You could somebody could reach out to you. Oh, I have a product. This is what my product does. Give me um, uh, a user guide miner. You won't say you don't know. You can't tell. You can't tell people because uh, as a technical writer, say you tell them. Ah, I can't write. I don't write user guide miners. Well, can they can't do that. It looks, it looks somehow, but with this foundation, you'll be able to say, oh, let me have your, um, the information. And then you'll be able to follow all the jargons and uh, big, big terminologies. It looks clear, simple, and very precise. A precise user manual. And it's like, wow, you did so well. <clears throat> so let's, let's move over to the next, <clears throat> next thing we're doing. Our time, we have actually gone far, and I'm happy about that. Um, okay. Please can we move over, you know, to the next slide? Okay, yeah. Okay, we're going to get at uh, grammar and proofreading skills and tools and technical writing. You know, we are human beings, we make mistakes. We could make grammatical blunders. We could not cross our eyes. We, we could not dot our, we can, we can sometimes forget to dot our eyes and cross our T's. How do we help ourselves? How do we, you know, keep all these things in check? Grammar and proficiency skills are crucial in technical writing to ensure accuracy, professionalism, and clarity in the written content. Here are some of the tools, tools or tips for improving your grammar and proficiency skills alongside with the commonly used tools in technical writing. One, the skills and then the tools. Remember, we have to develop our grammar skills. Review grammar rules and guidelines specific to technical writing. There are rules already. You know, some of us are we are thesis. We our thesis are not good. English language, you don't know when to use T H E I R and T H E R E. You know, some of these they look simple. But when it comes to writing, so this is a very, very important. You don't know when to use T H E N as simple as T H E and T H E Y. It could happen. So these are the things you have to look. You know, at some point, I had to get a book, brighter grammar, and start reading again. These are things I did in primary school. I had to start reading about tenses. You know, nouns, pronouns, first ten percent, second person, third person. You know, your adverbs, your adjectives, all those things, figures of speech. All those things are very, very important. They look so basic for them. attention to proper sentence structure, subject verb agreement, verb tenses and punctuation. like I said, some of us don't know where to use comma, apostrophe, um, uh, question marks, all this is, you just write, keep writing, about and just write, you're not a train. <laughs> so, you know, so why you're not a train, you have to know when to stop and pause, take a breath, continue, you know when to stop, a full stop, a lot of things. Itemize, you have to you have to go back to the basics. It's not a thing of pride or anything. Sometimes you need to go and pick up your primary school textbook, your primary school textbook to read, to know it. 
it's not it's not eating of pride so okay study commonly used words like i was always saying there 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 they they are so it is almost as well way to use uh, example you're using um like i was talking about pronouns you're using she's in she's you know where to put the uh, apostrophe all these things are very important for the writing so and then use them correctly read extensively to expose yourself to where written technical documents are left from there as a writer not to be a reader you have to keep reading people have written before you read keep reading keep reading is a tax for you it's where you become you have to read to become an authority you have to read to become an authority in technical writing it's not also only by writing you have to read to become an authority in technical writing some of us don't read you don't think that it's all about writing the best reader writers are the best readers you know in our community blocks blocks there you see that our you know our managers they keep posting technical papers they keep reading they keep writing so you have to keep reading challenge yourself to keep reading and writing and then use your proofreading techniques take a break and start writing to refresh your mind before proofreading read the content aloud to catch errors awkward faces so sometimes you need to read something you wrote aloud because that's when you notice ah, it, sound, it sounds weird it sounded so long and then you'll be able to correct yourself sometimes people buy dogs with plastic dogs and they read it to the dogs and from there you uh, know so you read your text backward sentence by sentence to focus on individual words and spot spelling errors proofread multiple times proofread multiple times focusing on different aspects each time example grammar quotation because you know you're, you're, you're writing although you're writing for the public it could actually give you a gig so you have to read more don't be careless about writing you don't have to be careless just like the way you're not careless about your appearance don't be careless about, because somebody may see your may, may see your your work and may not see you and judge you by your work you know some of us after this class some of us that they write and we have to go back to our articles and then modify you know make them stand out. and then you see the changes of how people keep snorting in comments feedback and all then you have to utilize your grammar and spell checking tools okay some tools we're looking at tools now you know we have grammarly grammarly is one of the widely used online tools that checks for grammar spelling punctuation and writing style it provides suggestions and explanation for errors yeah so microsoft word it has in, it has built in spell and grammar check features that can help identify and correct error they are writing we have the Hemingway editor an online tool that highlights complex sentences at, at excessive adverbs you know and passive voice like i said it's actually active voice helping you simplify and improve your readability so you see why it's important some of these um, online tools while you're doing your own you have to employ them Grammarly. I use Grammarly. In fact, I have a Grammarly installed in my Chrome extension. It's a Chrome extension. It's installed there. So it just automatically helps me as I'm writing. So you look at um, the language tool. Language tool is an open source grammar and style checker that can be integrated with various text editors, providing suggestions for grammar and style. Refer to established style guys. So we have already the as the Chicago Manual of Style. Apa style. Something about Apa. Gregor Psychological, you know. Asian style. IEE. That is IEE. Is the Institute of Electrical and Transgender Style Guide for writing for them. Depending on your field of you know, when you're writing, always look at the field or the publication requirement. Don't just write like you're writing in a desert. There's a field, there's the aim of that, the aim of the article should tell you where is the standard you're supposed to follow. These guys, they provide the guidelines for formatting, citations, and writing style, ensuring consistency and adherence to industry standards, 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 writing standards. I think I'll go back to the next slide. Mm -hmm. 
okay still looking at the peer review and feedback you have to seek feedback i said that you know when we're talking about the previous topic you need to look for feedback from your colleagues experts and all that errors inconsistencies areas that need improvement that may be overlooked when yourself you're not an island reach out peer review and feedback when you write we have a technical um, writing um, channel now. Post your papers there. Post the links, whether they are, you, know, you, write, you wrote on Medium, go get some pages, whatever. Post them. So people that are ahead of you, people that are like you read, and they give you feedback. And you know how to improve. That's the aim. You are fulfilling checklist. Create a checklist of common errors or areas to review the video. Remember, you have, you have, you have to have your own checklist of Common errors. It could be grammar, abbreviation, abbreviation, punctuation, and all that formatting. So use this checklist as a guide to ensure thorough review of the document. Remember, automated grammar and spell checking tools are helpful, but they are not foolproof. Always double check the suggestions provided by these tools and rely on your own judgment and understanding of technical writing principles. So, some of us, you know, we did, I didn't want to bring in any AI or anything at all because most of these platforms now have AI tools to help us. You know, they just auto generate articles. Remember, they are not foolproof, it could have mistakes, it could not even drive your point. Just use them as a help. Don't let them replace you. You know, somebody wrote something, said that his greatest fear is that AI tools will soon become like human beings, and then human beings will return to where AI still started. That means we'll no longer be able to think. We'll no longer be able to produce original things, original documents, things that are actually ourselves ourselves and for ourselves so don't get to the point that you're using ai generated tools to replace your own real stuff your real so don't allow AI to take your reality away so by continuously honing your grammar skills employing these effective profiling techniques and utilizing appropriate tools and resources you can enhance the quality and professionalizing professionalism of the technical right very clear so please the next slide <clears throat> we'll have to be a bit faster because of um, time okay okay so we're looking at some technical writing tools and application so where can you write where can you write okay okay so tools writing tools and application so show some here some um, popular technical tools that can assist you create effective technical documentation microsoft word we really know the microsoft word is owned by microsoft facet word processor commonly used for technical writing it provides already provides various um, formatting options so you can see spell checking and all that latex is a five setting system that's commonly used for technical Writing technical systematic scientific document. For example, you open your um, engineering mathematics, you see how those um, 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 formulas are written like. They are written, and you begin to wonder my, my, my people doesn't have all those things to be able to make them square, you know, square, principal, three, and um, subset, superset, and all that. You see, this latex is for um, technical, it's for scientific method. So there's already a pre formatted. Um, it's already a format, um, a typesetting system for that. So it press it offers precise control over document formatting, uh, mathematical equations, like I said, tables and references. It's popular for academic and scientific community. So we have Markdown. Markdown is a lightweight markup language that allows us to write plain text documents while with simple formatting syntax. So Markdown. It's used for creating documentation files, your know, readme files. Readme, readme is already like information about what your product, for example, in Google, or for example, you develop a product, your readme will tell us technologies you use, and all those stuff, the process. 
and then web content. So most of are basically converted to HTML, PDF, or other formats. So this one is very familiar to very familiar and uh, very popular to um, technical writers. So there's the syntax for Markdown. Very simple. You don't need to cram it. You just need to have to have the cheat sheet by your side, and then you do your thing. We have the Adobe Filmmaker Professional Authoring Tool for publishing specific, specifically designed for technical writing. It, it offers advanced features such as structured authoring, support for large documents, and seamless integration with graphics and multimedia elements. Very nice. Markdown, Flare, comprehensive single source authoring and publishing tool. It enables technical writers to create content in a structured manner, manage content variations, and publish documentation in multiple formats. So we have data. Is for Darwin information typing architecture is an XML based language for creating, organizing technical documentation. We have Jira, some of us may have heard of it, it's a project management tool that can be beneficial for technical writers, especially when working in collaboration with development teams. It allows you to track and manage documentation, tags, create and monitor project work and communicate with team members. Please, next slide. <clears throat> Okay, version control system. Version control system like Git, Mercurial, or soft version are essential for managing revisions and collaborations in writing technical and writing project. Example, I'm writing, uh, we are building a very complex product. It's a, a, a banking app. I'm doing front end, somebody's doing UX, many different things. We could use Git to track our changes um, for the front end, back end, however we choose to do it, our writing. You know, so that we could actually flow, enable multiple writers to work on the same document internally. So are you able to track the changes? No confusion are in to previous versions if needed. We have screen capture tools. For example, you're writing on uh, code and all that. You have, we have snap, 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 snap. I don't know, in, in Windows. I'm trying to remember whether it's snap or snipe, snipe or something. You have to like snag it, screenshot, slash shot. They allow you to capture screenshots and then annotate them with arrows, text, or other graphical elements. Sometimes you could go to the web to grab. So some of these tools are very important. These tools are used when creating your manuals, tutorials, yes, yeah, snapshots. Thank you. Um, technical support documentation. And then we have the style and grammar checkers. We have talked about Grammarly, Pro Writing Aid, Hemingway Editor can help you for grammatical correctness, improve readability, and maintain consistent style throughout your technical writing. Remember that this tool, the choice of tools may depend on your specific requirements, documents, complexity, collaboration is and personal reference. So for example, I cannot pick up latex for something that is not academic and scientific. For example, I cannot use a uh, markdown. I could, I cannot use markdown for something that is academic and scientific. So everything has to do with your choice of tools based on your field and then what you want to achieve and your personal preference. So please, next slide. Okay, building your portfolio with technical papers. So, clearly, yeah, yeah, there is a demand of platforms where your technical, where technical writers can put their work. We have WordPress, we have Wix, we have GitHub pages, we have Medium, we have LinkedIn, we have Google Sites, we have Behance, Cash Node, there are lots of them now. We have um, lots of them, Dropbox. Oh, they have, this platform offers various features and customization options to showcase your technical writing samples, provide information about your skills and experience, and gain visibility within the technical writing community. So it's important you don't write for yourself, you write for people, write for readers, you write for a reader, right? So make sure that your uh, content, your content are on a platform so that people can assess them, accessible platform. So it's important to choose the one that's best for you. You know, it's even important that you would have your own blog. Very good. You know, we could start off with these platforms. Having your customize your own blog. Very, very important. That's when you become you take you're taking it to the next level. So please the next slide. Okay, like I said, the applications of technical writing. I said user manual and guides. Policies and procedures. We have already looked at some of them. They are not limited to technical reports. We have looked at um, 
um, technical reports, proposals, works papers, training materials, technical documentation, online you now and frequently asked questions. You can see some of us, me, I'm learning a lot. I learned a lot. I'm still learning. You know, some of us will just think that it's a very random person that write the documentation for online help and they frequently ask questions. Most of the sites we go to, you will see frequently asked questions. If this happens, what should I do? The effect and all that. So you can see that it's, it's part of documentation. Certificate research papers, state standard, operating procedures. And then these are the applications. They cover a wide range of context where technical writing is commonly utilized. So you can see it's, it's wide, it's very wide, it's very robust, it's a very big field. You know, sometimes we tend to limit it to software development. But there are software engineers, we should, it's, 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 that's where it's important to us. But it should be beyond that. Because like I said, you could get beats that could pay you. But when you don't know the foundation, you don't know these things, you would, you would reject it and you reject money. So and you you know you will be happy. You will not be happy because who doesn't need money? And then for your own products, for example, you tomorrow you have your own product. You can write you can write technical papers for helping software engineers. But you can write frequently asked questions. You can write a user guide manual for your product. So it's 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 important you know the foundation of tech. Right. So please, the next slide mm -hmm. as we round up. <laughs> Okay, at this point, I'm going to be dropping um, a technical paper um, so that um, just a technical paper that we'll just look at, just for example, sorry, um, so that I uh, will just look at it and um, our manager will just share it and we look at it just to see if what we have been seeing. Uh, let's see, let's see something live. We can all learn from. And then um, we'll be also taking questions. Let's take questions at this point. So let me quickly drop one. One. Then that would be that thing. Okay. Uh -huh. Bottom one. Sorry, sorry, Amma, what did you I say? Chose yeah, I said I'll be dropping a link to um, a paper so we could actually look at it ourselves and review the paper. And I picked a, a, I picked a paper from Big Code Camp because I know that they follow the, they don't accept people that don't follow the style guide. So please, I would love you to um, share, you know, share this, this. I sent it in the comment section so you could just open it and share it so we could all see and then. We we'll review together and then learn, and then I'll take questions. Please. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I see. Okay, you could see from like I remember what when we looked at the out. I didn't. I didn't get you. Okay, thank you. Okay, you can see that this paper has to do with open source projects every developer should know about. And you can see the author, Hilary, I don't know, I don't want to wonder the person's surname. I'll just try, yeah, Kundi. Okay, you see, he's talking about, we have seen that uh, open source project every developer should know about. Ah. It has caught my mind because I'm interested in open source, for example. So please let's go down a bit. You can see the subheading open source programs, inclusion and diversity in open source. You can see how this person is taking everything. I'm so interested. The person told me first the title to this open source program developer should know. And now he's not talking about inclusion and diversity. They, Diversity, diversity, sorry, no post source. You can see that it's actually interesting. Let's go, let's go up. Let's 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 continue. And then if we start, many companies use code. Let's scroll, let's scroll, let's scroll. 
And because of time, let me scroll down. I don't know. Because I'm using my phone. Okay, can we go down a bit? You know, let's continue looking. Let's just look roughly at the document. These pictures. So if you have yours, you can just the link is there. You just open the link and uh, look at it yourself as we are talking. Okay, so yeah. So you know the guy, the uh, Mr. Hillary started telling us the in the style the introduction use code for open source projects and you know gave us a little background history then you know you know a little background history something like a little background history of open source follow it follow it follow it you can open the link yourself and look at it as we keep going he gave us a little background history of open source and then went ahead to now define what open source is I've been giving us the background issue. Somebody like, oh, what is this guy talking about? What is now open source? He now went ahead to define open source. You know, this guy is so good. Look at what he did. His topic, look at his topic first. Open source project, everyone should know. Then he gave us a subtopic. And then he didn't just stop there. He gave us a little rundown about open source and the use. Then he defined open source for us. And I said, before we get started, reviewing different open source, let's first have a recap of what open source is and why we should consider joining it. Joining it. So you see how he just systematically followed it's a process. He prepared himself, he did, he did his research, he did his outlines, he wrote, and then he reviewed whatever he did. So you can see how he just explained contribution, itemized, look at the bullets, look at his headings, what is open source. No one under each other is bigger than the other. It follows the systematic process and it keeps going. Look at his punctuation, look at how he, you know, the links he added, look at his uh, education and training project, listing them out and itemizing them. You see it. Internship and mentorship, Google, Google School of Summer of Code, Outreach, Google Season of Dogs, Real Girls, Summer of Code, Linux Foundation Program. Oh my God, he kept, he kept on, he keeps on, and that's it, some more Bitcoin, you know, and let's, let's see, let's see. Down and down and down. Oh my God, it is really, really, really long. You see how he did. And then um, you can see his conclusion. With all these projects and programs, you can see how many opportunities the open source community can present. All these programs can help you develop your skills, collaborate with others, and most importantly, create a positive impact on society by solving real world problems. If you're interested in, in exploring a project that I make sure to read more about what that interests you, so you can find a stable program that fits your expertise. It talks about joining online communities. And you can see that his conclusion also, his conclusion also had um all well, i say his discussion too he now said i hope this article points you on the right path and inspires you to venture into the world of open source remember every contribution counts no matter how small so do not hesitate to get involved and start making a difference today wow wow so you could see that this is this is lovely this is wonderful this is wonderful this is a wonderful article so this is just an example because I know majority of us here are technical um, engineer. So you could see that um, people come; they have their own standard of writing. So it, it's 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 so beautiful, so beautiful. You can see there was a systematic approach. Some of us know. I believe that um, even in our academic writing, this is also going to help you. If you're writing in school, you will no longer be writing anyhow. You will now know the process. You now know the process, and you you apply it. You apply it, so you can just keep for your free time. So I can take questions now. So this time for questions, I'll be um, handing over to uh, 
um, our, our program manager. I don't know. Let me check the slide. Let me see the slides when I'm done. I think I should be done. But I'll hand over to our program manager to um, organize how we are going to take the questions and all that. Thank you so much, Amara. This was so good. I have learned so much. I felt like I was in a, like a proper lecture and I'm so sure so many of us agree. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for doing this, even though your voice was not very okay because you're unwell, but uh, thank you for doing this. So before we go to the questions, I would like all of us to take a screenshot, whether, a screenshot, whether you're on a phone or on, um, on a laptop or whatever medium you're using, and then tweet or send a message on LinkedIn with what you've learned. Please mm -hmm. tag Amara, tag me, tag Lux Academy, and um, just share with us what you've learned. Uh, you can do that, take the screenshot now, that, that you can post it later. I've just also taken mine. So we can go to the questions. I'll start with the questions on the chat. Please post your questions on the chat to make it go faster. And Amara will take the questions, answer the questions. If not, if someone else wants to answer the questions in the in the call, they can also answer. Just lift up your hand if you want to answer the question. Uh, I'll start with my own question. My question was like, was um, do I have to use the structure of a technical paper if I'm just writing technical articles? Like I'm writing this a small instruction of how to install Python. Do I need to use the whole structure of how to write a technical paper? Okay, um, um, what your accent is like, you're giving a shot, just something, maybe for example, how to install Python. Yes, there's still, a, there's still a standard, there's still a systematic approach to it. As long as it's writing, there's systematic approach. You could just, uh, it could, it could just, it could be, it's, it's, it's not really going to be um, like when I'm writing like that, uh, Mr. Henry's article, but there's still going to be an approach. It, it could have just the introduction you could just tell us what python is as a programming language maybe the founder and all that and then you move over to the body it could just have um the introduction the body and then conclusion it may not have really experiments and all that but it still has to follow the systematic process yes i don't see any other questions relating to the class is there any, I'm not saying. Okay, Andrew, please go ahead. Uh, hi everyone. Sorry, I came in late. Um, just, uh, so my question is on, so, uh, sorry, I don't know whether you guys covered this uh, before I joined in, but it's on the question of like having a tone. Um, okay, from my, for my way of doing things, okay, I'm, I'm not doing like technical writing yet, but I like to like write anything in my own tone. So the, my question is, like, when it comes to technical writing, does that matter or is it just like just do a plain no tone in your in your writing? And, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we we, we actually you can say you joined late. We actually treated that um, in the fundamentals of technical writing, and then we also looked at, uh, you know, we looked at it that when we we're talking about proofreading and all that, there's a tone wherever you write it. I said the tone you must maintain must be neutral. It must be neutral. You shouldn't have your bias, you know. And you shouldn't have bias, you know, your bias of, for example, I, I gave an analogy. For example, I'm, I, 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 I used um, the effect of um, sugar in, um, from fruits of uh, fruits like yam, rice, and plantain for a diabetic patient. I just used that as an example. And I said, just because I'm writing about that and I love plantain most, I shouldn't bring in the bias. I shouldn't bring in the tone that, okay, plantain is the best. What I'm going, what I'm, what I'm going to write should reflect my research. The deduction for my research, it should just be planning on, should just be planning on the neutrality of what I deducted from the research, whether I got the data from primary type of research or secondary. So you should just focus on your research, what you go for research. You shouldn't 
to bring in your bias. And then you using your own tone. There's a tone. The tone that the tone you should have is neutrality. It should have effect. It should be effective for the reader because you're not writing for yourself. You're writing for your readers. So if you're writing, oh, I want to. Sh I'm maintaining my own tone. Yeah, you have to. You have a tone. Yeah, but you should also put it in consideration the people that are going to read it. People are not going to find your paper useful. So make sure that any tone you pick up or you choose to use is neutral. And there's no ambiguity. There's no bias or personal preference. It should be based on what you deducted from your research. Thank you. I want to make I answered your question. Um, thank you. Thank you on that. But also, because, okay. Then this yeah, goes no, back go to, uh, sorry? Yeah, yeah, say go ahead, go ahead. Uh, so then this goes back to because because I guess technical writing is not it's more of explaining ideas in the simplest terms based yes. on whoever is writing that or whoever is trying to communicate that idea. And uh, one of the things that I've come across is yes, we need to maintain the like you need to let the data or the facts speak for themselves. But then you also tend to see a lot of personalities in, diff in different, um, like in different technical writings or whatever idea is being communicated. As you go through, like as you go through the material, you tend to, uh, okay, I don't know whether I'm the only one, but I've, I tend to see a lot of like the writer's personality um in the material that they have done um so it, i guess that's where that's i guess that's where um i was trying to go to go to when i meant okay. like having a tone it's not tone. yeah okay I, I can can you give me an example just a simple example like what do you mean by personality me um Millicent, do you want to help Andrew explain? Yeah, I'd like to help out a bit. So I, I think I understood what Andrew is trying to say. And what I can add is that when you're trying to determine the tone, I think the first thing that you need to consider is the audience. For example, if you're writing um, a medical report, because that's also part of technical writing, if you're writing a medical report that doctors and physicians are going to use, so your tone will be professional. It will be like a business tone. You won't use uh, abbreviations. It will be like very cut, crisp and um, very formal. But if you're writing for like, um, let's say, how to install Python and you're writing for beginners, you can use a conversational tone where you just, it's a bit light and informal tone. So I think you just need to define who your audience is and also their expertise. And then that's how you can determine the tone to use. Yeah, I've also seen some articles that um, writers also like show their personality. Um, but that I would recommend not for a very professional tone, maybe if you're writing for beginners or just for fellow writers or some things like that, but not when you're writing um, for like a very professional audience. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna move on to, I'm going to move on to a question related to that and uh, to, to what Andrew asked. To add to Andrew's question on tone, reading, reading Nyakundi's article, uh, the one we just went through, I see he's used a conversational tone. Is this a standard? I'll, can you all say no? I think Millicent has answered that question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, a blessing, I'll, I'll, I'll get to you in a bit. I'll go to the next question. Uh, Gabriella is answer, asking, please, what what are the various fields that require technical writing? Is there technical writing in data analysis? And are they sought after like technical writers encoding tech roles? Amara, could you answer that? Let me just give a little and then maybe the data scientists hear me. 
could also give, I think Aaron, if Aaron is here, he would, he would add to whatever I may say. Okay, I know there's something called storytelling in data science, where you, 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 you have to tell the story of your data. You're selling your, maybe whatever your, the analysis and what the models analysis and everything to the, what we say, the company or your audience. So there's something, yes, it's very important in data science, yes. So I don't know, I'll hand over to um, Harriman to give something more detailed um, on this. Harriman, are you still here? Uh, I don't know if you can hear me, but uh, can you repeat the question, please? The question is from Gabriela. She is, uh, he or she is asking, uh, please, what are the various fields that require technical writing? Is there technical writing in data analysis? And are they sought after like technical writers in coding tech roles? Basically, are there tech, is there technical writing in data analysis? Okay, uh, maybe to answer that question, straightforward answer will be yes. Uh, this is always my choice of all whatever I try to advise someone. If you're trying to do technical writing, especially in the side of data, uh, there are different tools and different organization. I'll give an example of few. There is one that was called Fishtown Analytics, which converted into uh, DBT Labs. There is another one, maybe Airflow. So I've seen organization looking for technical writers to write about this. And again, uh, in most of the organization, the law is combined in the developer relation uh, team. So uh, to answer the question, yes. And again, choose a tool that you want to keep writing about or a specific field. Like if you join right now, there is what is called modern data stack which we don't have a lot of articles like right now if i want to look at a hand-to-head -head article on airflow maybe snowflake and um dbt i want to get a direct uh article or if i get there will be less than 10. so always pick a site that you want to write then do your research very well and write an article that stands out uh, okay the other thing is Maybe an addition to the point, uh, even if you don't get a job, I've seen someone discussing how you'd make money from Medium. Uh, you can write on dev.to if you want your article to go viral or to be shared on their uh, platforms, social platforms. But on Medium now, you have a chance to subscribe. I think it's $1 per week, but you're able to make up to... Uh, I saw someone talking about that's something K, but by just writing one article. So if you subscribe and write an article and it reaches more people, then you are able to make money from that. So the question to your answer specifically, apart from whatever else I've talked about, yes, they are technical writers. And uh, most of the times they are hired as developer relation engineer to maintain the documentation, to write articles and tutorials to guide people on how to use different tools, among other things. I hope I answered your question, Gabriela. Uh, Harun, he's, uh, Gabriela is asking if you could type the organizations that you mentioned on the, cha on the chat. Uh, um, I just give an example. Uh, out, it's BBT Lab, Data Build Tool. Uh, the, there are other different tools like Careflow, Apache Airflow. There are companies that draw for different people to look at those different tools so look at an organization that will be higher then write on it like there is one called upright that one is for fronted now if you're in fronted and you enjoy a technical rating then you can try to do research on it is called cms yeah uh then you can address cms yeah you can research on them and try to write with their uh tools and then you can share around their communities then you can like reach more people, they can recognize you and then maybe in future they can hire you. Okay, thank you so much, Harold. I'll, I'll go to Blessing's question. Is there technical writing in product management too? I will answer this. Yes, there is. You, as a product manager, you have to write a lot of tests, reports, evaluations, and it's 
basically technical writing. So the, the, I think the, the answer to that, and even to our, the question Gabriela asked, is that any part, there's, there is technical writing in almost everything. And it's just how you, you just have to do your research and see what works for you. And are you comfortable in that field? And then uh, you can get a job there or you can just write for free, for fun. Um, trying to I'm trying to collect the questions that are similar together. Um, the next question I'm going to ask, ask nature to uh, uh, Amara to answer, answer is on what instances is one supposed to bring in code blocks in a technical article? So to elaborate on the steps, this is from Lilson Mwadime. You know, uh, when I, I was giving uh, the, some of the things that you need, tools and all that, tools for um, technical writing, I said, I talked about visual representation. I talked about, uh, um, I think I mentioned, I talked mainly about graphs and um, bar charts and all that. Yes, you bring in your code examples, for example, um, uh, let me give an example. I'm using, for example, in JavaScript, Using let, um, you're you're trying to um, uh, explain let um, the var variables let uh, const and var, and you you have to give the examples after your explanation. So yes, once you're done with explaining explaining a concept that has to do with code, it is very important that after that you put in your code block just to ex just to show what you had already explained. I hope I did answer your question. Mm, yeah, I guess that's answered. The yeah. other question I'm seeing is, um, uh, is uh, thank you, Amara. This is from Kenyo Muridi. Is there a standard on the person, second or third person, when writing technical articles? Hello. Okay, I didn't really understand the question. Um, let me try to. Okay, Millicent, Millicent, you can take the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, maybe I can try and answer this. So what I will say is the preferred standard is second person where you use you. So the reason for this is because when you refer to the reader directly you that's a form of engaging with them so the standard um the preferred one is you but the instance where you can use first person is when you're giving your experience for example you want to write an article about um how i joined google within 10 10 months of learning how to code so this is where you give your own experience and the things you had to learn and things like that so that's when you use you but for most articles just stick to oh sorry i've said for uh i think i lost my train of thought um when you're giving your experience and the things you've done use the first person but when you are writing like these other articles like how to and explain um technical things so stick to a second person where you engage with the the audience yeah um i'm not sure if i've answered your question i think you have so okay. the most mo the most preferred is a uh, second let's see i'll i'll answer f a question that is not really re related to the class but it sort of is because of the assignment Felix is asking, what are we supposed to write about our first article? I didn't understand the question. So the question is, um, the, 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 the assignment was, we, we gave you a heading, then you write a, an article based on the heading that was given. And um, actually, even the assignments for next week and the other week are going to be like that. Um, is that okay, Felix? I hope that answers your question. So the question as uh, the assignment for week one. Uh, just give me a minute, please. Sorry. That. Okay. So the assignment for for week one was 
uh, write an article title, Technical Writing 101, the, or, or Technical Ultimate Guide. You can re try to rename it if you want, but bas basically write an article about this, what you've learned, like this class. That's basically what, um, that's, that, that's basically the assignment, like how to, fundamentals of technical writing, technical writing 101, yeah, how to start basically. And on that note, I want to mention something. Um, so we have a writing page as Lux Dev. I will share the link with you on the chat, on the message and also on Slack. So if you want to contribute, please just get in touch. Um, make sure you are, you submit you you complete the assignment for week one and submit it on time, and uh, then keep reading and uh, freelancing. I will go to the next question from Blessing. Amara spoke about Git. Will be will we be put through on how to use this platform? The simple answer will be no, not in this, not in this, um, in in this bootcamp because this bootcamp was more focused on technical writing and not it on how to use it, but. There are so many uh, avenues and articles about how to use Git. I'm not sure if we have a, we have some from our uh, previous classes on Git. Harun, do we have any? I didn't get your question. Repeat, Daisy. Blessing is asking if we have if we are going to be led through Git, GitHub, and how to maybe. Uh, like... oh, it's about technical writing now. Yeah, so we are not going to. We're not so the question I was asking you, Harold, was that uh, do we have any previous material on how to use GitHub and Git? Oh, but I will add this in our previous bootcamp, we have a recorded video on YouTube that they can use for that. Okay, so Amara, there's a we'll, I'll share the link to our YouTube channel with when I'm sharing the recording of this. And you can find uh, a, rec um, a previous recording for how to use Git and then to, to be easy for you. The other question is from John Gidui. Are there instances where you can use code blocks to show a concept? And because they do not run code, I then add a snippet of my terminal to show how the code block will look like when it runs on a terminal. I was trying to explain how to push Git GitHub push files on GitHub when I when I encountered this. Amara, would you like to take this? I'm going to repeat it one more time. Are there instances where you can use code blocks to show a concept? And because they do not run code, I then add a snippet on my terminal to show how the code block will look like when it runs on terminal. I was trying to explain how to push files on GitHub when I encountered this. Let me just get an understanding of the question from John. Yeah. So it, like you are writing an article and then you take code snippets yes. from your terminal and like from like snapshot or something and then so I might take this. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what uh, I think uh, okay. I think Aaron, 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 please please can you answer that question? Is John still here? John Gidui, could you please maybe explain your question if you're here? John? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. I have yes. put your voices down. Maybe you can try to. Hello. Maybe I can ask you for a clarification. Uh, I can ask a clarification question. Like, do you mean how to highlight code in your art course? Course. Um. Yeah. So, uh, I was I was trying to explain how to push files on GitHub, and because I felt I felt like um it's quite a a, a tricky concept to grasp when someone is reading the article, I thought I could include code blocks um to maybe save the command. Then I felt like that would not be enough, and I'd need someone to see how the the code will look and how before running and after running 
on my terminal. So I ended up having both a code block to write the, the command and below it um, a snippet of my terminal showing um, the command and how it looks after running successfully. I felt like maybe that could be too much, so I'm, I'm asking for clarification. Thank you. Okay, uh, maybe I can show you an example. Uh, okay, just a second, I close some tabs here. Okay, good. Uh, I'll share my screen very first and show you something. I don't know even if uh, uh -huh. I want to share everything, entire screen. Good. Uh, yeah. Uh, let me know when you can see it. We can see it. Okay, so I would just give you an, an idea of what I would recommend. Uh, just go to one. Okay, yeah. Now, I have an article here. Um, I can use another one. Uh -huh. Yeah, like this one now. So if I'm writing an article and I wanted to show you what will happen after you run maybe this command. Jesus. If I wanted to show you what would happen if I run this command, I will open my terminal, even I wasn't prepared to share this. Okay, yeah, this is what I would do. I will just like, maybe I wanted to push some code. I would go to this uh, and record a GIF as it works. Like after running git push, I would record a GIF or a short video then convert it to GIF uh, because of storage to make sure that the video loads very fast and then come to my article and when i click on editing yeah this is how i uh i was able to up, up like append the code part here but now here at the bottom i can attach that video with text of output what will happen after you run the command that you learn there for, uh, at the top. If you want to attach code, you use these back ticks, three of them, then you indicate the language. It can be C sharp, Python, SQL, <coughs> and then close it at the bottom. And then you can attach the video. You attach the video the same way you attach a photo. This is how you attach a photo. So you attach a video the same way. I hope I've been able to answer your question. Yes, we have. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Harun. Um, Victoria is asking, uh, Amara, I'd like you to take this question. Can we have an article with more visuals than text? Is it advisable or what proportion should each take? Okay, like I said, every article has uh, a target, yes, your target audience and uh, the people who are going to be reading i'm sorry that my voice is low uh, because of the cold and the fever uh and i think you know talking so low so like i said um the audience you're writing to if you're going to be using more visual maybe graphs there has to be a, there has to be a process to how you got your graphs okay there should be tables, okay. For example, there may not be um, so much um, lingo, but there should be tables that will explain what your graph is doing. Because I cannot just plot a graph from oblivion. So whatever you're doing, and there could be more. You could see, like for example, it has much to do with maybe data, you know, data science analysis, and then those people that are doing um, practical research because we have analytical and practical research. So when you're talking about those people that did practical research, you went to a lab, you did things, you have your table, your tables, you go, you give the explanation for even that you see more tables and maybe little write ups and graphs. So it could happen. But make sure that remember you always keep in mind your audience, your audience, who you're writing to, 
I think professionally for physical professionals will they be able to see and do tables and the graphs and understand clearly? What you better write it for you all, still a professional audience, you have to consider mm -hmm. that you have to put in a lot of uh, explanations into it. So yeah, it could happen, but you should also very much consider your audience. Yeah, uh, Victoria, I, get, I hope you, you answer, your question has been answered. So it basically mm -hmm. depends on your article. Yeah, you can write a technical art. If you're writing a technical article about to kids, to like um, 10 year olds, it will have more visuals than if you're writing uh, a technical paper for someone in the medical field, but it will still have, um, to still have visuals either way. So I think it, be, it really depends on your audience. I can't see any other questions. I will take any question that is, is not here um, before we, we close this. If you have a question, please just raise your hand. It doesn't have to be related to the class. Any questions? Yeah, so I will share the Slack. Uh, well, how do you choose a blog? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to boot. I'm so, okay. Ahmed is asking. I have another session to attend or oh, enjoy the first class and looking forward to the next week. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Ahmed. I, do, I'm, I don't want to butcher this name. So, so I was asking, how do you choose a blog platform? Millicent, would you want to take this maybe? Millicent, can I help Daisy? Okay. Yeah, uh, I think this is the last question that I'm taking. So it depends with your head goal. Like if you want to raise small money, there are different uh, platforms that help you. And yeah, you get money from writing from it. But if at the end you want to reach more people and maybe earn a job, I would recommend you choose a platform a platform that has many people like uh let's say dev.io because uh that is where i got the like if you look at my articles like i don't have like mm -hmm. if you look at most of my article you may try like, uh, i just want them to confirm the numbers before i lie <laughs> yeah you meet some some of the articles uh Share screen, built in, share, share, built in, share. Uh, if you look at most of the articles, you see the numbers. But if this number was on medium, I would have gotten like uh, like 30k sometimes because they pay like almost 30k because they pay per view. So yeah, but I choose to use dev.io. Why? Because they uh like they share what you have written on their slack on their twitter handle and you get rich to many people and in the process you might get a job from it and also i wanted to use it as a proof that i can write whenever i was looking for a job as a developer relation engineer so your head goal must determine again we have like uh different like digital oceans and other organizations that have their platform where you can contribute. So if you have an interest of joining this organization, you can start small by contributing to their platforms. Okay. Thank you so much for that, for, for that Harold. Um, also, John has shared uh, an article that he has written uh, on Git that uh, will help uh, blessing and anyone else who's interested in learning it uh, thank you for that so please remember about to write your to do your assignment and uh, submit it the, i said that the deadline is on sunday but you're really not strict about it so that if you're not able to finish you can still finish before the end of the book club it's for the next three weeks make sure you just finish all the assignments so next week on saturday same time we will be having millicent she's been in in this uh call you've had her speak she's going to be our to take us through our second week's classes i will share with us the assignment that to for week two so that we can go through it 
and prepare to have a class next week. And with that, I think we can call it a day. Have a good morning or good night, good afternoon or good night, depending on where you are. I'm so glad to, I was able to lead this. And thank you. Bye. Also, uh, this you should have mentioned that you let you was recording the class and you share it on YouTube and share the link for reference. Oh yes, yes, I, I, I think I did. I mentioned that a bunch of times. Yeah, the class is recorded. I will also share the link with you once I'm done. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Bye.